It takes some of the pressure off your trading, can't it? Because you're not in a directional bet, you're in a spread bet. You're trying to maximize the difference between two assets that seem to be mispriced. Both assets seem to be mispriced. And there's a relationship that you understand, not just because you see it diverging, but you actually understand that relationship because you've been watching it for some time. Those relationships give us some incredible opportunities to maximize um, profits that perhaps nobody else sees. Because you don't care which one makes you the money, so long as the spread makes you the money, that's where the deals are, right? That's where the deals are. We'll talk a little bit more about spreads this afternoon. We'll look for some bond, uh, some bond spreads. We'll try and do some of those. And there's one actually setting up just now that we could look at just now. And uh, and it's a uh, we we talked about this one before. And uh, and it's a buy bond. And obviously, if we're going to buy the other one, we're going to be selling this part here. Now, as I said, the objective of this is not to make money. It's to understand the spread. Okay? It's to understand the spread itself. It's not about making money. It's about understanding volatilities, understanding ratios, understanding how far out one market can get for the other market to kick off and stuff like that. But you can start to think about these processes, can you? Now, the reason why I've popped that one into the market just now is this situation here. You'll see that the dollar is at a low price, and you'll see that the oil is at a high price. Now, I'm not doing this spread properly. I'm just showing you an example of what you can do, because if I'm doing this spread properly, I'd have to take an oil component to the trade as well. But obviously, the orange line and the blue line are pretty close to each other to make it kind of similar, at least in terms of how this trade should evolve. Now, obviously, what we're doing here is we're buying the red and we're selling the orange. Now, if the orange goes up and the red goes up, we don't make any money. If the orange goes down and the red goes down, we don't make any money. But if they do close a little bit, they should make some money. And you can see that the spread is up $31, $25, $62 profit now on the bond, and it's up $6 on the, um, $6 on the dollar. So you could be putting in sell limit orders to take that money at around about $70 profit on a one lot. The spread's hardly even closed, has it? Look, the spread's hardly even closed, and yet you're in a double alpha profit on these two products. Now, obviously, that's, it's, it's, it's always going to be moving. It's always going to be chopping and changing. One's going to go up and one's going to go down, and it's going to be a case of, you know, trying to work into the best possible deal at the best possible price and all those kind of things. But the point is, it's a spread trade. You can see it's now 30, 40, 50 odd dollars in profit on a single contract. What's not to like about that? If you can take, the, if, if you can take those two trades off at those profits, what's not to like about $50 on a single contract with, with very, very little directional risk? You're not guessing which one of these two is right. You're guessing that they're both wrong, technically. And obviously, the objective, if they're both wrong, is to try and capture the essence of these two trades. Now, you might say, but how do you know this wasn't a buy on oil? Well, that's, as I said, that would have been your third part to that spread. You would have bought oil at the same time as setting this trade up, because it might be the oil market that ends up moving, in which case this spread will just end up showing a loss. And that doesn't make any difference, because you, you know what the spread is, right? But as you go forward, we can start putting this into context because I can start looking at those situations where we can start seeing the various correlation coefficients. And we can actually see here that the, the real yield is in the wrong place, but there are other things that are wrong as well. Look, this is all completely wrong. This whole spread is back to front and upside down, especially with gold. And uh, we can start to look at the gold market and you can see the gold market is is also quite high against the dollar as well here, isn't it? So that could have been a buy on gold as well, just as much as a buy on oil. That could have been a buy on gold to offset the rest of that spread trade. Yeah? So you can see the spread's hardly moved. The spread's hardly done anything, so we'll just leave it. I mean, it's not about making profits, guys. It's about understanding. I hope you understand that about your, your demo account. Your demo account is there to practice ideas with, not to make money, to practice ideas with. 
to get used to putting trade on without making mistakes, getting used to putting trade into the markets. And we'll come back to that spread in the, you know, maybe half an hour's time or whatever. And we'll see what the spread ended up doing from a one lot point of view. We won't bother adding to it. We won't try and take profits. We won't try and take it off. We'll just leave it for a little bit of time. And we'll just see what the change was. We'll see what the change was over time. If we see the dollar rising against real yields, we'll take a look at how the spread ultimately performs. Make sense? Anyway, welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Uh, Bank of England uh, day to day. And uh, obviously, that's what you see the big spike on the pound is all about, of course, the huge spike in the background. And we've seen some pressers coming through as well. Um, negative rates are part of the Bank of England's toolkit according to Governor Bailey. Well, we knew that. They, they, they didn't take uh, b negative rates off the table before. Um, the bank rate is the main tool for altering uh, conditions impact of reduced APF stock is uncertain. Not an awful lot of change on this one in terms of uh, the overall thread that came out of the Bank of England rate decision at 12 uh, lunchtime. Uh, so there wasn't a huge amount. The Bank of England's QE to uh, 20 billion versus an expectation of 20 billion. The QE GILTS program, that was the corporates, by the way. The GILTS program, 875 billion. The expectation was 875 billion. So no change to those. Obviously, no change to the bank rate itself at 10 basis points. Um, so there wasn't an awful lot of difference. MPC vote remained unchanged. It was eight. It's still expected at eight, and it was expected at eight, and it's still eight. So there's no change to that. Everything kind of lined up. There wasn't a huge difference. And therefore, you basically saw the pound spiking down. You saw the pound spiking up. You saw the price reversing back into zero. So in other words, everything just fell back into normal. Everything fell back into normal. Not really much of an opportunity then. Correct, not much of an opportunity. Let's catch up with our spread and see how our spread's doing. And you can see our spread is sitting with a small loss just now because of the dollar. If we'd taken the oil part, we would actually be in a very reasonable profit at this stage, actually. Uh, but you can see because we didn't take the oil part, we're actually sitting on a small loss. You can see the dollar part's making a nice bit of profit. You can see this short uh, euro position. It's about twice the amount, three times the amount behind that. So you can see that there might be a, a requirement to do ratio spreads on these. That's what you're trying to find out. That's what you're trying to, to find out is what the ratio spread is on this. But as I said, the real spread would have been a long oil trade as well. And you can see what happened to the long oil trade. Because you would have done this trade, this trade, and a buy in oil. And the oil prices went from 20 to 50. So if you did the buy on oil, you'd be up about 30 ticks, there $300. So whilst this is down 200 and this is up 60, you'd also be up $300 on your oil. So you would be currently in a net profit of about $170. You'd have been a net profit on the whole spread of about $170. So just remember that this is only half of the spread itself. Well, not if you're going to put the oil in as well, John, remember. You know, this spread isn't, isn't what we've set up here. We're just putting it in as an example. If you did the oil spread, you wouldn't need to do the ratio because you're not using it as an outright, you're using it as a spread with the oil included. And you'd have made the big money on the oil trade, which is the one part we didn't put into the spread, of course. Anyway, welcome in, guys. I hope you're all good. So the final piece of that jigsaw puzzle would have been an oil position that you would have had as well. So if you're going to do the full spread, then you'd need to you need to bring the oil into this consideration as well. It's got to be dollars, bonds, and oil. Dollars, bonds, and oil. That's the only way you can actually trade the orange line against the red line and be 100% accurate with it. Otherwise, you've always got the chance that you've ended up taking the wrong part of the oil trade. You've taken the bond part only. And that's exactly what's happened on this occasion. You've ended up with the, without the, bot, the oil part, which is the one that's made the money, because the trade was at 68.20 at the time we took it. And it's now trading at 68.50 for $300. On a one lot, one lot, one lot basis, that's where the trade would be at. And that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. It's just an example, guys. So we're coming. Hope you're all good. I hope you're all good this morning. We've done uh, some business on a different, couple of different spreads. Uh, talking about it, thinking about it, getting you guys to consider what's happening. But very, very important. We kind of get our heads around these types of ideas. Because that's also important from a relative value basis as well, isn't it? 
from a relative value basis, we want to know what relative value means. We want to know what it looks like. We want to know what it feels like. In terms of um, in terms of other data this morning, let's just get through those before lunch. So we started out talking about the Bank of England. No changes to the Bank of England at all. Um, but other than that, we've also had uh, UK construction PMIs coming in disappointing at 58.7. We uh, we saw that the German factory orders came in with a, a strong beat at 4.1% against a prior of uh, minus 3.2. The forecast was just for 2.1%. Aussie trade balance numbers was pretty much in line with expectations. But as I said, the UK numbers from the beginning all the way through to the expectations were right in line. That's why the pound spiked to the high, spiked to the lows and reversed back off. This afternoon, unemployment claims at half past one for the US. Unemployment claims at half past one, not uh, non-farms. Unemployment claims, 382,000 and uh, 400,000 prior. Fair enough. But uh, other than that, not very much else to really get your teeth into this afternoon. Natural gas storage numbers at half past three might, if you're inter interested, natty gas might be of interest. Uh, but other than that, all good, uh, guys. There's nothing else happening, not much else diddling. And obviously, in, in line with that, we're just um, we're just watching what else is going on. We're going to be talking about spreads this afternoon. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some of the other things that we've uh, been covering recently, things like the volume divergences, the volume and value divergence. We, but that's important when it comes to spreads as well. Tim was asking about the timing of a spread. And the timing of a spread is, is, is about, we, we didn't bother legging into the spread. We just took it so that we could show you the volatilities. But the idea is that you, you, you still use your order flow. And you also try and trade the spread in the directional side first, because that's the one that's going to be hardest to fill. Whereas the one that's going against the direction is going to be dead easy to fill. And that's the one thing you start recognizing. If you get filled on the hard part first and you get filled dead easy, you need to get into the second leg instantly because it might well be that you've ended up calling the turn. So you really want to get into the spread quickly. But we'll touch on that in classroom this afternoon, guys. We'll touch on that in classroom. Anyway, welcome in, guys. It's 20 past one. We're ready to rock and roll today. See what, uh, see what the market's got for us.